Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were uh, looking at chapter nine, uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, building genuine friendships and relationships in the body of Christ so that we can, uh, you know, speak into people's life. We can uh, nurture them in the ways of the Lord. We have the, uh, when we have people in our hearts, the Holy Spirit gives us a right to speak to write into people's hearts, uh, we can uh, nurture them, build them up in the ways of the Lord, strengthen them in their walk with God, you know, and also we are there available for people when uh, they need um, help. And also, you know, we need to build a relationship, genuine relationships so that we can go to people uh, to be mentored by them. Uh, we can go to people and, uh, you know, in times of our challenging, difficult situations where we can receive help and um, be built up in the faith and a journey along with God, persevere in our race um, and be strengthened even in those times of uh, 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 difficulties. Okay, so that is what uh, we're talking about in this uh, chapter. Uh, so, uh, but there is a personal challenge even as we go about, uh, you know, uh, fathering people or mothering them or being a brother and sister to others in the faith. There's a personal challenge here. I just uh, put on your uh, on the screen. Can somebody read that, please? It's a personal challenge, but it's good for us to know even as we uh, step into this role of, of fathering, mothering, and being a brother and sister to someone else, helping them in their faith journey, walk with God. What are some of the challenges? Can somebody read that, please? Anyone? Anita, can you read that personal challenge on the screen? Yes, ma'am. To be a brother to another minister of God, I need to spend time with him to really get to know him. I need to spend time with him and his family to watch how he treats his wife and children. I need to spend time at his church or ministry office with his staff see how he works with his staff. I need to invite him to my home and my church or office. We must spend time where we worship, pray, and seek God together. I need to lay hands on him and pray for him. I need to have him lay hands on me and pray for me. I need to stand by him in times of difficulty and journey with him through it. Through it. I need to celebrate his success and moments of victory with him. I need to be available for him when he needs to needs counsel and advice. Similarly, I need to be able to reach out to him for his counsel. I need to receive from his receive from his gift, anointing and ministry. Similarly, he must receive through the through the gift, anointing and ministry that God has placed in me. I must honor him for who he is in God, and similarly, he honors me for who I am in God. We must partner with each other as friends. I must sacrifice and give for his personal welfare and his family. When people hate him, crit criticize him, I must stand in defense and still be his friend. We need to be such friends, such brothers in kingdom. Thank you, Anita. So even as we go about uh, being a brother, sister, father, mother, mentoring people in the body of Christ, there are these challenges. So it's good for us to know these challenges so that we can work out things in our minds, uh, you know, how much we can do, what we can do, you know, lay things out for us so that we have more clarity. Uh, if not, uh, this role will become uh, a challenge to us as well, instead of us, uh, you know, uh, instead of it benefiting somebody else and benefiting us, it can become a challenge in itself. So it's important for us to know the personal uh, challenges that uh, uh, mentoring uh, in the body of Christ uh, require, uh, that we can go through and what are the things that are needed, okay? Um, also, you know, uh, when we are mentoring, you know, when a brother or sister in Christ stumbles, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, we need to uh, help them out. How do we do that? It says here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, you know, we who are spiritual, you know, we should do that, uh, 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 you know, we should restore them in a spirit of gentleness. Uh, because, you know, uh, we could also be tempted, we could also fall in that area. We don't, uh, you know, uh, we don't correct them or restore them in a sense that we are super spiritual, that we are, uh, you know, uh, uh, good people and they are bad or we are uh, spiritual and they are sinners, you know. Uh, uh, but, you know, we need to uh, do that in a sense of gentleness, also considering that we could also be tempted in that, ve in that very uh, area. And uh, when a brother or a sister makes a mistake, you know, uh, we shouldn't be criticizing them, accusing them or uh, gossiping about them, publicizing, uh, uh, you know, about their faults, their weaknesses or what they have done. Uh, because as it says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 to 5, it says, you know, uh, you know when we look at the speck in our brother's eyes, and we don't consider this a plank in our own uh, eyes. So, you know, we need to look at our own lives uh, where we also have our own weaknesses, our shortcomings. So instead of, uh, you know, accusing, criticizing, uh, gossiping, or uh, publicizing about their weaknesses of another leader's weaknesses and that, uh, you know, uh, how they fell, you know, it's good for us to rest, help in, in their restoration, uh, do it with meekness and gentleness, pray for them uh, that God would give them the grace and the strength to overcome their uh, challenges. Okay. 1 John chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, uh, you know, is talking about. Uh, uh, light and uh, you know it says if we are in the if we if we confess to be in the light you know but we hate our brother we are in uh, darkness so can somebody uh, read one John chapter two verses nine to eleven please one John chapter two verse nine to eleven he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, so here we see that you know scripture tells us that if we claim to walk in the light, that means if we claim that we are children of God, that we are kingdom builders, that we are sons and daughters of God. But we hate our brother. It can uh, not just talking about our own uh, uh, blood-related brothers, siblings, talking about uh, another brother or another sister in Christ, in the body of Christ. It says that we are in darkness. Okay. Um, uh, we are blinded and do not even know that we are in darkness and it's a dangerous place to uh, uh, be. So we cannot carry hate in our hearts. Uh, we need to get rid of every kind of bitterness, jealousy and unforgiveness that we have towards uh, you know, other ministers, other leaders, pastors in the body of Christ and also other believers. We should not carry that the hate we need to put the whatever you know hurt that uh, or wrong they have done to us just put it behind us you know um uh you know if there's some misunderstanding just go and clarify it with them uh if there's something that you have done uh that needs restoration you can restore uh go back restore that friendship that relationship uh you know just uh, forgive them release the hurt uh, whatever they have done and uh, you know do it for the sake of the kingdom do it for the sake of god do it for the sake that his kingdom can uh, be extended that there is uh, no seeds of uh, envy and strife and uh, envy and hatred and jealousy and unforgiveness that brings about strife that brings about division in the body of christ but just uh, letting it go for the greater purpose for the greater glory of god saying god i'm hurt I'm upset, uh, but I'm just letting it go because uh, I don't want this to become a hindrance, a stumbling block um, uh, uh, to bring about strife and division in the body of Christ. I want your kingdom to be extended, God, and uh, you know, just 
uh, put away the wrong that has been done, uh, release forgiveness, uh, just ask God to heal up those wounds that are there, and uh, you know, uh, you know, just uh, relate with that brother and sister. Um, just be friends with them and uh, see how you can contribute in uh, enriching and building their life uh, for the glory of uh, God. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a time where we are in, there's a need for brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers to arise in the kingdom of God, where we are nurturing, we are um, uh, training uh, uh, the younger generation in righteousness and holiness in the ways of the Lord, uh, so that, you know, after us, they will continue the work of uh, God. Otherwise, it will be like what happened to the people of Israel, you know, uh, the book of Genesis just says, uh, you know, uh, the, the younger generation did not know uh, the laws or the commandments of God and hence they did not walk in his ways, did not keep in his ways. Uh, and there was a generation that arose that did not know the ways of the Lord and hence they walked away from him. And we see, you know, uh, the people of Israel uh, living in uh, such despair and hopelessness uh, because of their sin, you know, um, God punished them by sending other uh, uh, kings to rule over them, to take away all of their uh, produce of their land at the harvest time, uh, you know, making them uh, uh, as slaves and, and subject uh, to the other kings. And we see God raising up judges when people cried out to God. But why was this whole generation that came up uh, living in sin and worshipping idols is because they did not know the ways of the Lord. There was no one to teach them, no one to pass on the com commandments, no one to teach them the laws, the ways of, of God. And hence there was this whole generation that came up who did not know the ways of the Lord. So it's important for us, uh, you know, to... Uh, to train the younger generation uh, in righteousness and in holiness and in the ways of the Lord. Okay, so that is uh, this chapter about how we can uh, be mentors and uh, you know raise up a godly generation who would continue the work of God after us. Any questions on this chapter, chapter nine? Any thoughts on this chapter? I think some of you might already be in this role where you are mentoring people, you know, fathering them, mothering them, you know, building them up in the faith. Anyone doing that? For mentors to the younger generation, people younger to you, people or even people older to you, anyone here who are mentors? Okay, if uh, if not, you know, you can come into that role, that place, you can uh, pray about it and ask God, you know, in small ways you can start in just mentoring and building up the younger generation passing on what you are learning also in the bible college passing it on to them teaching them building up uh, building them up in the faith okay there are no questions and no thoughts and we'll move on to the last chapter okay uh, raising the next generation for kingdom service in okay, chapter 10 God has uh, given all of us an ability to, you know, uh, procreate uh, both in the natural and in the in the spiritual realm. Uh, look at what uh, uh, you know. Paul says in First Corinthians chapter four, verses uh, fourteen and fifteen. Can somebody read that, please? He's writing to the church at Corinth. Can somebody read First Corinthians four, fourteen, and fifteen? It's on the screen. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 14 to 15. I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For it is in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Thank you, Jeffina. So Paul is making an important uh, statement here. 
uh, he's telling the church at Corinth, you know, you can have 10,000 people who uh, come and instruct you in Christ, but, you know, um, I'm not just an instructor. I'm not somebody who's telling you what to do, what not to do, but, you know, I'm a father for you. Uh, you know, uh, you will not have many fathers, but yet I am your father for you in Christ Jesus, because he says, I have begotten you through the gospel, which means I, you know, you are my children. You are my sons and daughters uh, uh, through the gospel that I have preached uh, uh, to you. So Paul very well, Apostle Paul knew his role. He knew that, uh, you know, his role was not just to be an apostle to the Gentiles, but also to be a father, you know, uh, to raise up the next generation, to father uh, the churches to uh, build them up in the ways of the Lord and also uh, to be a father uh, uh, to, uh, to to raise up many leaders who would continue the work uh, after him. So there's some important statements that are mentioned here, which I like to for us to know, you know, uh, you know, when we uh, father people uh, in in the faith or when we mentor people uh, in the ways of the Lord, we do not produce Xerox copies or exact replicas. Uh, you know, we give birth, uh, those who give birth, uh, those we give birth to have their own individuality and their identity. So, you know, uh, uh, just when as we are mentoring people, we need to remember this, that, you know, uh, we need to mentor them in the ways of the Lord, but not, you know, build their identity on uh, what we want them to do or what we think is right for them to do, what we think is their calling or their gifting. But we need to just, uh, you know, build them up to pursue their vision, their calling, uh, their identity in Christ and what God is uh, entrusting uh, to them, just like, you know, uh, parents make the mistake of, uh, you know, living out their dreams in their own children. Uh, if they have, if they have unfulfilled dreams, and they have not been able to fulfill their own dreams, uh, they try to, you know, uh, get their children to do it, but they fail to see that their children, you know, are unique in their own way. Uh, you know, just because, uh, you know, the husband and wife both are doctors, they can't expect their uh, the child to be uh, a doctor or just because uh, the husband and wife are missionaries, they can't expect their children to, uh, you know, uh, also become a missionary when they grow up. Or, uh, you know, as a father, as a pastor, uh, he wants somebody else to, you know, continue the uh, church after him, which becomes more like a business mindset. You know, uh, then, you know, raising up his own children to uh, become pastors uh, when they're not called to it can become a, a big disaster in itself. Uh, uh, so we need to know that, you know, even as we're mentoring people, we're fathering uh, people in the faith uh, that, you know, we don't produce Xerox copies, just exact replicas of who we are. But uh, we need to know that they have their own individuality, their own identity. God has given them their own giftings, their own callings uh, uh, and things that he wants them to do, a function that he wants them to fulfill in the body of Christ. And so we need to raise them up in their own calling, in their own uh, vision. The next uh, statement, uh, which is very important, is, you know, our success in ministry is incomplete if we don't raise successors if you don't raise people who would you know take over the work after us even if you are started a bible study group or you know a prayer group and uh, you know uh, whether it's in your office or it, whether it's in your church or whether it's in the uh, you know place where you are uh, uh, god has placed you you know uh, look for people who can continue uh, this, even though you leave and go, or you move on, God wants you to move on, you know, raise up uh, successors. The day you begin any ministry, uh, you know, even if it's starting a life group or a, a Bible study group or a prayer group, it's a day you should start planning your departure. That means you, you need to know that you're not going to be handling this group for the rest of your life. You can move on, but you need to look for somebody who can continue the work even when you are uh, not there. And this is God's desire. This is how what God desires that his anointing, his revelation, which is given to one generation, you know, is passed on to the next. 
and even as it's passed on to the next he will add on you know he will give in a fresh anointing fresh revelation to that uh, uh, upcoming generation and he will empower that new generation uh, to you know to build on what the previous generation has done uh, and to continue the work of God uh, to continue building the kingdom of God as we read in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 21 so can somebody read Isaiah chapter 59 verse 21 please Isaiah chapter 59 verse 21 As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. Thank you. Uh, so here we see that, you know, it's God's desire that, uh, you know, um, uh, the, yeah, uh, that his word, his law, his commandments, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, you know, is passed on uh, from one generation to the other uh, generation. So even as we go around, uh, you know, mentoring people or fathering them in the faith or raising up leaders, uh, what do we need to keep in mind is, uh, you know, uh, if there are no Timothys, like Paul raised up, uh, Timothy, you know, if there are no Timothys to continue the work, then what we have started will lie in ruins. Uh, the the people that you raise up as uh, the next leaders uh, will become leaders in your place. So the Timothys that you raise up will become uh, the uh, you know the Pauls of tomorrow. They can become the leaders. They can become the apostles. They can become church planters. And uh, we need to also keep in mind that we need to raise the next generation. Otherwise, uh, you know, there will be no one to continue. Uh, the work the present generation uh, has done and to build on uh, that, you know, and sadly churches often, you know, focus on, uh, uh, you know, uh, on ministering uh, uh, to the present generation and they basically neglect the the next generation that is coming up, basically neglect the, uh, the children or the youth. And uh, even though there is some work that is done, but, you know, the focus uh, is more on presenting the spiritual truths to this present generation. But we need to know that, you know, we need to build on the next generation because uh, each generation, uh, uh, you know, needs to pass on the spiritual truths, the spiritual uh, uh, revelations, what they have received, uh, so that the next generation can begin from where the previous generation has left. If we don't pass on, uh, you know, uh, the uh, what we are learning, what uh, the spiritual truths, the revelations uh, to the next generation, then the next generation will come uh, to a place where they have to start afresh. But if we are building on uh, uh, each generation, we are building on uh, the next generation, then they will take on from which the previous generation has left on, they will build on, and we can, you know, uh, then we can see the kingdom of God advancing in a greater measure in a much powerful um, way. So we look at how to raise up Timothy's uh, from, uh, you know, the life of Paul, the Apostle Paul, how he raised up Timothy. So, you know, we look at uh, Paul Timothy's relationship and we'll draw some uh, lessons on how we can raise up the next generation uh, to carry on the work of what we have um, started. So we see that, um, you know, uh, Paul, uh, when he looked at Timothy uh, in Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 3, um, uh, can somebody read that please? Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 3. Acts chapter 16, verse 1 to 3. Then he came to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. Thank you, uh, Jeffina. So uh, even as Paul was in Derby, uh, uh, you know, that the area of Derby and Lystra, there were many young people there. Uh, 
uh, but you know Paul sends a special connection with this young man uh, Timothy he had heard good reports about him so Paul made arrangements for Timothy to be part of his ministry team uh, Paul also circumcised Timothy so that you know he was he could uh, associate with him and also you know Timothy would be able to work among Jews which was very necessary at that time uh, so we see that Paul was sensitive to the leading of the spirit um, and uh, also we need to be sensitive uh, when God brings in Timothy in our lives shows us Timothy in our lives or when God is sending you as uh, being uh, like Apostle Paul into somebody else's life we need to be sensitive of the circumstances the times the seasons that God is taking um, us through and even as uh, you know we sense if God is you know bringing in a Timothy in our lives you know how we can build them up or if God is taking us as a, as a Paul into somebody else's life how we can uh, speak into the lives of other people how we can nurture them and uh, build them up and we see that uh, you know Paul uh, builds Timothy up and also you know takes him uh, alongside him uh, even as he uh, works uh, and does ministry uh, uh, in his missionary journeys he takes Timothy along um, and you know uh, uh, Paul is um, you know uh, very transparent uh, in his in his life in his ministry his life his ministry is very open for other people to see and hence uh, Timothy was able to uh, clearly study uh, uh, and see Paul's life how he does things how he faces the various challenges various difficulties how he goes about doing ministry how he serves the Lord um, so all the time you know uh, Timothy was along with Paul he was being built up and then you know he's built up to such an extent where uh, Paul uh, sees him no longer as a son but sees him as a brother as a co-laborer as a co-worker and uh, sends him to the church at Corinth sends him to the church at Philippi and uh, you know eventually uh, before uh, you know uh, Paul's in his last days he sends him to uh, oversee the churches at Ephesus and uh, because he knows that the way he's trained a young Timothy you know he's able to take on all these difficult challenging roles and he's able to continue the work and uh, you know Paul must have uh, been at peace and rest assured that uh, you know people uh, sons in the faith that he's raised up like Timothy and Titus are able to continue the work even after he uh, moves on so you know we look at uh, various references here from Acts chapter 18 verse 5 and Acts 20 Philippians chapter 2 verse 22 First Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 where uh, we see how you know Timothy goes around with Paul in various places and uh, he uh, he's able to observe uh, uh, Paul's life his ministry and where he does things and how he is uh, equipped and strengthened in his own faith and his ministry and you know Paul launches him out as a minister of uh, God so even as uh, you know uh, God calls uh, sends Timothy's in our lives to divine appointment to def uh, when he orchestrates divine situations in our life he brings in uh, Timothy's in our life we need to be careful uh, to select our Timothy's uh, carefully uh, we know that you know Paul would have met so many young people in Lystra and Derby and other places but you know uh, uh, there are few people that he selected and you know he built he built them up uh, in the faith uh, and in the uh, uh, to carry on the work of the ministry it was because uh, I uh, you know we could say that Paul sends a leading the Holy Spirit and hence he invested in Timothy's life so we also need to be careful who we select as Timothy's uh, we need to look at uh, not just the giftings, the talents, the charisma of the person, but we need to look at their heart attitudes. You know, what is the condition of their heart? Where they're teachable, moldable, uh, where they're willing to learn, uh, they're willing uh, willing to re receive correction, um, and, uh, you know, their heart is towards God, and they have a right heart attitude of humility, of of being faithful uh, to what God has called them and entrusted uh, to them. So these are some of the things that we can look at even as we select our uh, Timothy's. The second thing we can learn uh, from Paul Timothy's life is, uh, you know, develop a nurturing uh, relationship. Okay. 
so we see in these verses here, you know, it's put on your screen. Um, uh, Tim, uh, Paul refers to Timothy as his true son. First Timothy chapter one verse two, beloved son, uh, in the same chapter. And First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse seventeen, he's telling the church at Corinth, you know, I'm sending Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ and teach you. And as I teach everywhere in every uh, church. So we see that, you know, um, uh, uh, Apostle Paul had a special relationship with Timothy. Uh, Timothy was a spiritual son. Uh, and uh, Paul was a spiritual father to uh, Timothy. The third thing we need to, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep in mind, even as we raise up the next generation, is establish a closeness and transparency. Uh, Paul is telling Timothy when he's writing to him, 2 Timothy chapter 3, he's saying, you know, you uh, have uh, care, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, affliction, uh, everything that happened to him, the persecutions that he endured. So basically what Paul, Apostle Paul is telling Timothy is you have seen my entire life. You know, the way I live, my manners, my doctrine, uh, what is my purpose in life, how I have suffered, you know, uh, but how I, have uh, how I was persecuted, but how, how I persevered, uh, you know, the afflictions I went through, but, uh, you know, what was my attitude, what was my reaction, uh, and how I endured everything. And so he's telling uh, Timothy, you know, uh, even as uh, you have seen my entire life, you know, I want you to follow in that same pattern. And why is uh, Paul mentioning this here? Because Paul knows that he's uh, coming to the end of his life. He will uh, soon be, uh, you know, uh, martyred. And uh, he's left Timothy, this his son in the faith, you know, who he has nurtured. He's left him uh, in a very important position uh, in F uh, overseeing the churches at Ephesus. There were so many churches, uh, you know, also uh, not just overseeing the churches in Ephesus, but in and around Ephesus, which includes the seven churches that we read in uh, the in the book of Revelation. Um, uh, and uh, so there was a huge responsibility. And so Paul is saying, uh, telling Timothy, reminding him of, you know, uh, you know, don't give up, even though the going is tough. I know it, Paul knows it was it would be very tough for Timothy, what he's going through as a young leader, how he has to deal with older people, older leaders who are already there in the church at Ephesus. But he's saying, you know, you've seen everything in my life. Uh, but I want you to just follow that same pattern, how I have been living, what I have done uh, in and through all the persecutions and afflictions. And uh, he's basically saying, you know, persevere, continue to run your race with perseverance. Don't uh, give up. And he's able to say this because he has built up um, young Timothy. Uh, uh, and how is he built up? by op his life has been an open book it's been very transparent and the people who have journeyed along with paul uh who he has built up in the faith have uh you know observed his life and his ministry in a very close manner and hence he's saying you know just pattern what i have done also we see that you know uh even as uh paul raises up sons in the faith uh uh, he also communicates specific instructions. Uh, he tells them what they need to do, what they shouldn't be doing. Uh, we see this even as he writes to Timothy in his uh, in his letter in First Timothy and Second Timothy. Even as he writes to Titus, um, uh, he tells him how what he must do, what he shouldn't be doing. Uh, so you know, uh, even as we nurture people, uh, Timothy's. In the faith, we also need to give them specific instructions on how they need to live their life, what they need to do, what they shouldn't be doing. Also, encourage them, exhort them, correct them. Um, here we read in First Timothy chapter six, verse twelve. Paul is giving Timothy uh, an encouragement: fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on to the eternal life for which you were called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many. Um, witnesses. So, uh, you know, one of the toughest things to do is to correct people, but we must learn to correct them, uh, teach them, 
you know, and do that in a gentle, uh, in a loving, in a very positive, uplifting way. If we don't correct the, our sons in the faith or our brothers and sisters in the faith, then, you know, uh, what, uh, what we overlook will become like a cancer and we know what cancer does to the body, eventually kills and destroys the um, uh, body. So correction is like, a spiritual strat, uh, surgery uh, we know that when you go to surgery it's the toughest time it's a difficult time it's uh, it hurts there's pain but uh, the end result is uh, good okay so we need to correct people correct them in gentleness correct uh, the sin and not the person uh, but love the person and uh, you know uh, do that uh, do the correction in an uplifting in a very encouraging way Okay, the next thing we need to do even as we raise up leaders or to build up the next generation is clarify the uh, cost. You know, uh, Paul was very straight in communicating to Timothy that there is a cost involved in being a minister and that is why, he, you know, the, uh, what we just read here in this verse, he talks about uh, not just, uh, you know, his, his doctrine that he's preached, the manner of life, his purpose of faith, but also he talks about his long suffering, his persecutions, the afflictions. So in every area of life, you know, uh, Paul was uh, uh, very open about his life. He was very transparent. So people can see the cost that is involved in ministry and, uh, you know, the sufferings that is involved, uh, what they need to lay down, what they, uh, what they need to take on, how they need to run. Um, and uh, hence, it will give them a good perspective of what Christian ministry is all about. And they can uh, know that even as they walk into it, this is uh, everything comes as a package and how they can handle the various uh, situations. Okay. The next thing is a uh, place honor, build up, uh, treat with um, respect. So we see that, you know, once, uh, uh, you know, Paul uh, raises up Timothy in the faith, uh, we see him no longer calling him as uh, his son, uh, taking pride that, you know, he's the one who built up Timothy uh, uh, or he's the one who's his mentor, he's the one who's brought him to this level. But we see how Paul talks about Timothy once he sees him mature in the faith, once he sees him in a position where he can take on responsibility, he calls Timothy as a man of God, calls him as a brother, a fellow worker, uh, and he recognizes Timothy's true worth, uh, his, his gifting, his calling, and his uh, anointing. He also calls... Uh, uh, you know, Timothy as, uh, you know, uh, as somebody who is, uh, uh, he looks at Timothy now as his peer on the same level, not somebody who he needs to mentor or, you know, teach, but he's brought him up to a level where he can look at Timothy as his, as his peer, as uh, somebody who is his co-worker in, in, uh, in building up the kingdom of uh, God. Okay, so we also must learn to be true fathers and mothers in the house of God, and we need to raise up, uh, you know, sons and not servants. Because when you uh, raise up uh, a servant, you know, uh, or when you treat, uh, you know, Timothy's that God sends into your life, you treat them as servants, then you will raise them up as uh, servants. If you treat them as sons, you will raise them up as. Uh, sons. So if you raise them up as servants, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, they will they will come to a place where they're looking for reward. And if they don't receive a reward, they will leave and they will go to somebody else's house uh, where they're looking for the same reward. And if they don't find a reward, they, they will keep moving from place to place. And, you know, we have really not raised up somebody who is building the kingdom of God, but looking uh, for their own personal agendas, they're looking for their own personal things. But if you raise up um, sons, you know, a son is not uh, looking for um, reward. He works in the house because he belongs there. Even if a son is upset or angry, he does not move out of the home. He stays there. He continues to work there. He will always remember his father. And, uh, you know, um, a son, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, after you have gone, the son will continue the work because he receives that work as an inheritance, but a servant uh, receives a reward for their work and they will not really look on building what you have uh, started or what you want them to build on because they're looking for a reward because you have raised a servant. But if you raise a son, they would look uh, they would continue uh, building up on where you have stopped or what where you have discontinued. Uh, they will continue to build on it because they receive that as an inheritance. So we need to uh, build Timothy's that God sends into our lives, uh, build them up as sons, treat them as sons so that you can raise up sons and not treat them as them as servants. If you treat them as servants, you will raise them as servants and that will not help in extending the kingdom of uh, God. Okay. The next thing we need to know is uh, even as we raise up the next generation, as we build them up in the faith, you know, uh, when they come to a place where they are built up and strong, you know, delegate a responsibility to them, empower them, trust them with uh, uh, with uh, with the roles and responsibilities, and uh, even as you give them the roles and responsibilities, you know, just place that trust and confidence that uh, they will fulfill what you have entrusted. Uh, to them uh, because you have raised sons and you have helped them to grow mature in the uh, uh, in their walk with uh, God. And even as you delegate roles and responsibilities, you know, don't keep on interfering with them uh, in what they're doing, uh, but let them take the lead, let them take the responsibilities, but, you know, uh, just help them in times of uh, uh, difficulties, uh, be there things to uh, to uh, strengthen them to encourage them even as they uh, run their race and if they make any mistakes you know uh, gently correct them uh, you know show them the areas where they have done the mistake and how they can rectify it and how they can uh, correct it so you know um, we also see that uh, in these references how Paul uh, recommends uh, ent enthusiastically and positively uh, to the church at Corinth and to the church at Philippi. He says, you know, Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear, for he does the work of the Lord I as I also uh, do. And so he says to the church at Philippi, says, uh, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state but I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your uh, state. You know, so he's saying that uh, Timothy is one who would do what is required uh, because he is a one mind just as uh, I am towards you. And he's talking about, uh, you know, uh, but you know his proven character that as a son with his father he served with me in the gospel therefore I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with um, me so we see that Paul is recommending uh, 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 giving a positive recommendation to the church at Corinth and Philippi uh, about Timothy and how he sends out Timothy to do the work that is required there and how he looks at Timothy as his co-worker and co-equal in the uh, ministry. Once we build up the Timothys, we release them into their calling. Uh, so we see that, uh, you know, Paul releases Timothy as, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's, who he has uh, built up, matured in the faith. He sends him to oversee the churches at uh, uh, Ephesus. So, you know, it must have been a great moment of honor and pride for uh, for Paul uh, to see Timothy become his peer, uh, you know, uh, to see Timothy take on the work and to accomplish the mission that, uh, that Paul has entrusted to him, that God has entrusted to him as uh, well. Okay. Um, you know, when we treat uh, Timothy's as sons, uh, you know, uh, we, we raise them up to be joint heirs. The problem arises when the son fails to grow up or when the father desires the son to always remain a son instead of becoming a joint heir. So we see how beautifully Paul transitions from treating Timothy as a son and then treating him as a co-worker, co-laborer, uh, a peer, uh, 
somebody who can take on responsibilities and uh, uh, you know we see Timothy uh, you know taking on that responsibility and fulfilling his job and uh, you know uh, proving himself worthy of uh, what his spiritual father looks at him now no longer as a son but as a joint uh, heir okay uh, so even as we grow old uh, and you know our, our days are drawing to an end the younger generation is taking on uh, the responsibility we just don't uh, stay away but uh, you know uh, we use god's anointing the wisdom that god has given to us uh, to impart it to the generation continue to help them to mature them in the, the ways of the lord uh, uh, from what we have received in our walk with god we can continue to uh, give it to them just like moses uh, did with the people of israel till his very last days he continued to teach them reiterate the laws uh, build up joshua as the next leader teach him uh, and then you know uh, uh, anoint him in the position that uh, uh, as the next leader so you know even as we grow old we continue to uh, share the wisdom continue to help the younger generation mature in their walk with god um, and even as we grow old you know uh, we keep the anointing fresh uh, the fire that is burning in us oh, we keep rekindling that fire uh, we do not retire but uh, we continue to do god's work uh, you know uh, we keep bearing fruit even in our old age as it says in psalm 92 verse 14 they shall still bear fruit in their old age they shall be fresh and uh, flourishing so we can continue uh, ministering uh, even in our old age bearing food for god's uh, kingdom and then you know depart with grace so first chronicles chapter 29 verse 28 says so he died in a good old age full of days and riches and honor and solomon his son reigned in his place talking about king uh, david so even in his old age you know uh, he was able to continue doing the work of god what god had called him to Okay, so that is the end of uh, chapter 10, the end of uh, the last chapter. So this will be our last class. Before we end our class, uh, anyone has any questions, any doubts, anything that you want to say? I hope this uh, uh, two uh, APC publications, these two books, uh, Kingdom Builders and Kingdom of God has helped you, um, uh, to, you know, to extend your vision, not just to what God has given to you, but also to build the kingdom of God and how you can go about doing it. Uh, what is your calling? What God has portioned for you? How you can go about uh, doing that? I hope it was helpful. Yes, no? Any questions? Any doubts? Yes, Pastor, it was really helpful to enlarge our mind, actually, to really know how to live, what to do each and every second. So thank you so much. Thank you, Japina. Thank you for joining class every day and for, uh, for reading, just for your inputs, just for being there uh, to read. Thank you. It was very encouraging. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Zelatoli. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, everyone, for... Uh, being part of this course. I hope this course uh, helped you all. You can please uh, feel free to share your uh, feedback, your suggestions, and how I can improve uh, teaching this course better. So I'm always open to feedback. So please feel free uh, to share your feedback uh, in the you know uh, the stream page. Uh, how we uh, how I can make this subject uh, more lively, more exciting for the students. Uh, in the next uh, batch, and I teach this course maybe next year, uh, how I can do better, uh, what I shouldn't be doing, what I should be doing. Uh, so your inputs and suggestions uh, will be very valuable, will help me a lot. Um, so please feel free to take some time to just share your suggestions. Yes, Lubega? I just have a question, ma'am. Yes. Uh, when are we expecting our assignments? Because uh, like three, four days ago, I was seeing on our WhatsApp group, like uh, people were saying that you really posted uh, an assignment. It was that a rumor or it was true? 
Uh, I've uh, I've posted it on the stream page on 27th October. I have mentioned that there are two more assign assessments that are slated for the semester. Uh, assessment three was November 4th, and I've uh, given the portions there, chapters one to five from the book Kingdom Builders. And assessment four is November 18th, portion six to 10 from the book Kingdom Builders. So I have posted this on uh, the stream page on 27th October. Excuse me, I'm sorry. How have we done one, or we've done two assignments? Uh, so we've uh, we've done three. We just have the fourth one left. I'm not seeing anything like that, ma'am. I only saw one that uh, that we you marked us. I've not seen any other. Pastor, even I have not seen any assignment. What about the others? Uh, even I didn't saw any assignment, ma'am. It's not assignment, it's assessment that I posted. No, ma'am, I didn't see. Ma'am, we didn't see. I think, uh, ma'am, Lyndon here, I think we completed two ass uh, assignments or assessments, sorry, and I don't think we have received anything else. Okay, let me just check that and uh, get back to you. Yes, we finished assessment two. Okay, I've made a mistake in that. Okay, uh, we finished one and two assessment. I needed to put assessment three on November 4th, which I think I missed. Okay, I'll just rework on those dates and can I uh, let you know about it? So sorry for the inconvenience. I completely missed this. I'll, I'll just check on that and get back to you. Is that okay? Thank you, Mom. Thank, okay. Thank you, Lubega, for mentioning that. I'm just so sorry. Uh, I think I just overlooked that. I'll 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 look at it and then get back to you. Because there's so many other courses I'm teaching, it's keeping a okay tab on it. I'll just look at it and then I'll post it on the stream page. Is that okay? Thank you, mm -hmm. Mom. Yes. So sorry for the inconvenience. Anyone else has any other questions? Pastor, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else has any questions? Okay. If not, thank you everyone for uh, joining this course. And this is our last class. Uh, I'll keep you posted about the assessments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.